have here is a Samsung A12 PCD. This is the... The... <laughs> Hello there and welcome. What we have here is a Samsung PCB and the reason why I'm making this video is because I want you to understand how you can repair Samsung PCBs, how you can troubleshoot. I want you to understand how the components are connected to each other. You understand because Samsung PCBs are quite different like the other PCBs that I've been showing on my channel. You understand? So I'm just going to zoom in the screen right here. Then we get into the PCB guideline and the speed mapping of this PCB. Then I'm going to explain everything to you guys step by step. Okay, so what are we starting with? I want us to start with the V part and the V-Built connection of this mobile PCB because almost all Samsung PCBs are be being connected in the same way. So I want you to understand the V-Pad and the V-Bus connection of Samsung PCBs because those are the most important connections that you have to check when you are troubleshooting problems like power problem, um, dirt mobile and charging problems, you understand. So what we have right here is the battery connector and it always starts right here. So this red pin right here is the V-Pad which is the battery positive. So once the V-Pad leaves the battery connector, it has only few components right here which are not that important because if you look right here, you will see that we have a fuse resistor right here. This white uh, component right here is a fuse resistor, a low value resistor. So when the V-pad leaves this resistor, where does it go to? Instead, you might think that it's coming right here in case you already know that this is the power manager IC. This is the power manager IC of this PCB, but instead of the V-Pad going to the power manager IC like in other PCBs, it's not going to this power, power manager ICs. So, understanding this, you will know that, okay, if this one is not switching on, instead of just going directly to the power manager IC, there is something in which I need to check, which is like the gateway of the V-Pad voltage. And I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you the connection and how it gets to this power manager IC because you can see directly right here that the red V line right here is not going to the power manager IC. This is the line right here. It passed right here and it's going somewhere. So we are going into the bit mapping and I'm going to show you something right here. So right here we have our bit mapping and I'm going to zoom in then explain what I'm talking about right here. Okay. Just for you to understand in case you are looking right here and you are not understanding something. This is the PCB that we are working on, but it's in bitmap format. It's in a bitmap format. So we have our battery connector right here and I'm going to click on it so that you will see the connections. Okay, I will need to zoom in well right here. So if I zoom in right here, you will see that the, the line is really clear right here. It display a line. Which helps in, which helps for you to do easy jumper and know where the, the inner layers of the connection is in. Yeah, in case you have to scrape before you solder a jumper. You understand, but that's not what we are talking about right here. So when you see that the V pad voltage leaves the battery connector, it gets to this fuse resistor right here that I showed you before. So we are going to start from the fuse resistor to check where that V pad is going to. Okay, cool. So when you click right here, the connections are supposed to show where the output, which is the output voltage of the uh, of the fuse resistor right here is going to, which like I said, normally in almost all PCBs, it's supposed to go to the power IC, which right here, this is the power IC. But if you check, you will see that there is no connection. There is no VPAD connection right here. So where does it go to? So if you check on this other section right here, okay, cool. So if you check on this other section right here, you will see that it's coming to this IC instead. So which IC is this? This is the charging IC of this mobile PCB. You understand? So the connection of the V part of this phone doesn't go right into the power manager IC when you plug in the, the battery. It goes to the charging IC first before it goes to the power manager IC using a VPH connection in the VPH 
track you understand so what is this vph that i'm talking about once the v part enter the power manager i see right here you will have the output which is still a v part but a vph connection that is going to the power manager ic input you understand so the v vph that i'm talking about right here is right here it's right here in this coil right here so what we have right here is a coil you might not be able to recognize it right here but if i go to the pcb guideline you will see what i'm talking about so if i come right here to the guideline and i find the charging ic you will see what i'm talking about okay cool so if you look at the power manager ic right here you will see that the v part enters right here which is from the fuse resistor that i just showed you and we have the output this this output right here is instead the input of the power manager ic so you, you can call it the vsys connection or the vph connection so this is the v part of the power manager ic of this pcb you understand so if you are trying to troubleshoot power problem on this PCB so instead of starting with the power manager IC which is this right here you have to start with this IC because the connection needs to pass right here in the charging IC before it goes right there so like I said this is the VPH connection right here and I'm going to zoom in the connection so that you will see what I'm talking about so once we get our input voltage which was right here on this capacitor, we get the V-part voltage. We're supposed to get the output voltage right here, which is going to the power manager IC. So if this PCB is shorting in this VPH line right here, there will be a full shorting on this PCB because it's normally a V-part connection. So I'm going to zoom in right here. So if I zoom in right here, you will see that, okay, this is where, this is the point in which voltage is, is being supplied on these PCBs. Because you can see that even in the network section, the standby voltage in the network section is being distributed from that particular VPH line. The power manager IC gets its voltage right here, then the network section gets its input voltage right there. You understand? So let's talk about the V bus connection which is very important it's almost the same like the 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 v part but it's there is a different right there so we have our pcb guideline right here and this is the v bus the v bus from the down board of this pcb is on this particular pin of the display connector so the v bus which is the the charging positive line is on this side of this connector is on this particular pin of this connector so if you are troubleshooting charging problem on this mobile pcb which some of them will be different but you have to follow the same steps to troubleshoot charging problem so if you are troubleshooting charging problem on this pcb for example you will first have to check that if there is 5 volt right here on this particular pin because normally when you plug in the charger the 5 volt from the, uh, the charging system is supposed to come right here. Then from here, where does it go to? Okay, so from there, it comes directly right here. Uh, most people think that this component right here is the charging IC. This is not the charging IC. We call this OPV. It's just for voltage protection of a mobile PCB this particular IC right here this is not the charging IC and if there is a shorting right here in this ICs it will completely short the V bus of this PCB you understand so when you are following you have to check if the PCB has a voltage protector which is OPV you understand so if you check and you see the 5 volt right here you have to come to the charging IC itself. So where is the input voltage of this charging IC? So you can normally see right here we have V bus in which is the input voltage. So when we have the V bus in then the output voltage which will charge your battery will, will come out from the V part right here. <coughs> you understand? And there is something really different about this type of charging IC. You see that this type of charging IC 
right here on this Samsung phone is not the type of charging ICs that we mostly work on. It, it has a lot of integrated circuit, like it deals with the DM and the DP of this mobile PCB. Instead, let me show you what I'm talking about right here. Instead of other phones that have the Vbus, the DM and the DP, which the DM and the DP is going directly to the CPU after the charging port, Instead for this PCB right here, the DM and the DP goes directly to the charging IC right here. You understand? So there is no direct connection between the charging uh, USB positive and USB negative with the CPU. Instead, the direct connection with those pins are with the charging IC because this charging IC right here, as you can see, it's big and it has a lot of integrated circuit. That is why if you zoom in right here, Okay, cool. So that's why if you zoom in right here, you will see that we have the DM, the GP pins right here, which is the input which are coming directly from the uh, charging card. And we have the DM and the GP, which is the output. And these ones are going to the CPU. Do you understand? So for example, if your phone is not reading on a PCB, even when you change the, the charging port, then you try following, there is no open circuit between this line, then the first thing that you will need to check is to change the ch this charging IC right here instead of rebuilding the CPU or changing the CPU. You understand? So once we have the VBUS input right here, you're supposed to get an output voltage right here, the V part which charges your battery. And you need to understand one thing again about Samsung PCBs. Most of them, you wouldn't get an output voltage in the V part right here when you connect the charger into the phone instead the pin in which you will get a voltage in you will get a voltage in the back on right here you will get a voltage in the back on which is one of the middle pins of your battery connector so when you get a voltage right here it might be between 1 volt to 2.5 you understand so if you are troubleshooting charging problem and you don't see any v part voltage when you connect the charger make sure that you check the bat on voltage right here which is in one of the the middle pins of the battery connector if you see a voltage right there then you can now connect your battery to see if that's working even if it does not work then the problem will be right here because when you check and you see the voltage right here as soon as you plug in the battery into the phone the battery now would then give a signal to this power uh, to this charging IC right here to give that output V part output to charge the battery. So these are all about transistors. These are transistors work integrated transistors work in this charging IC. They enable a signal. They receive signals and switch on voltage in different sections. You understand? So this is what I want you to understand for now about troubleshooting power problems on a Samsung PCB. You understand? So in case you want to learn more about any type of PCB mobile phone problems, in case you want to learn more in just a short time, make sure that you message me using this number on the screen right here because I have a complete mobile repairing course in which you can learn everything in just a short time. The course is not free, but it's, the price is fair. You understand? And believe me, you will learn a lot from it. So goodbye, and if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure that you give a subscribe right here and become part of the family. Thank you.